All right, section 8.2, special right triangles, part two. Today we're looking at the 45, 45, 90, which is actually a little bit easier uh, than the 30, 60, 90 because two of the sides have to be the same. So I, I think I give you the hardest one on, on part one. Um, but in part two, I'm going to teach you guys how to do what's called rationalizing the denominator. So I am going to throw another little piece into this one that I didn't put in yesterday uh, to make it a little bit more official. All right, so example one, we are going to, we're going to do just kind of how we did yesterday. And I want to start off with the Pythagorean theorem, just so we can kind of learn the, uh, we, we can learn the pattern. So remember, if, if this angle right here is 90, we have our hypotenuse, which is always the longest side. And I can find this other angle, and this other angle is 45 degrees. Now we learned earlier on um, that, the sides are, are related to the angles they're across from. So this is an isosceles triangle. You have 45 and 45. So since those angles are the same, the sides across from them have to be the same. So I automatically know that n equals 9 because they're both across from 45 degree angles. So they have to be equal. So now I could do the Pythagorean theorem. And I could go leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared which is 81 plus 81 equals m squared, which is 162. And then now I would typically go and I would punch in the square root of 162, and I would get a decimal. But I don't want to do the decimal. I want to actually try to break this down. So I need to find uh, a perfect square that will go into 162. And remember the perfect squares. So our perfect squares are 4, 9, 16, 5 times 5, 6 times 6, 7 times 7, 8 times 8, and so on and so forth. Maybe I'll do another one. 9 times 9, and 10 times 10. So I'm trying to find two numbers that can multiply together to make 162, where one of them is a perfect square. And I think I can do this. I think I can break down 162 into the square root of 81 times the square root of 2 because the square root of 81 is just 9. So that gives me a nice 9 radical 2. So that's the answer. So now I have a side of a triangle with 9, 9, 9 square root of 2. And I come over on the next problem and I'm going to do something similar. I'm going to move a little faster. Again, because these two angles are both 45. I know that the two side, the two legs there are 6. So leg squared plus leg squared equals m squared. And that's 36 plus 36 is 72. Take the square root of both sides. Find a perfect square. Um, and, and I want to try to go down the list and get the biggest one I can. You know, 4 will go into 72. So I could use 4. 9 goes in there, though. You know, 9 times 8. Um, 16 actually goes in there as well. Uh, no, it doesn't. Take that back. 16 does not go in there. 25 does not go in there. But hey, 36 does. 36 times 2. So this is the square root of 36 times the square root of 2, which the square root of 36 is just 6. So I now have the answer. M is 6. <clears throat> radical 2. So looking up above, hopefully you see that there's a pattern there where whatever the side length is, the hypotenuse is going to be that number times the square root of 2. So here's the following relationship on all 45, 45, 90s. The relationship or the ratio is always going to be 1, 1, radical 2. Okay, now in 8.1, we learned that in a 30 60 degree triangle, so a 30 60, the smallest side we labeled as 1, the hypotenuse we labeled as 2, and then the middle side, the one across from the 60, was the square root of 3. So yesterday, this is the triangle that we used to, to set up similar triangles. Today's lesson. In 8.2, we are going to be using this one. 
And again, there's shortcuts, and some of you guys have seen the shortcuts. Um, I'm going to kind of let those out later and use them more. But in the beginning, I want to kind of make sure that I burn into your hard drive, into your brain, the, these relationships here. So I'm going to be using similar triangles again today. All right, so let's go down and let's apply this relationship and solve some problems. So example three, we have a triangle, and I'm going to set up just like it, the mini version of the 45, 45, 90. And it's 1, 1, radical 2. So now I should be able to find y, and I should be able to find x um, using proportions. Now I'm not going to find the other side using a proportion because it's just too easy to say, hey, if you're across from 45, the same thing's got to be over here. So that one I'm not going to set up a proportion for because they have to be the same. Now the other one I'm going to. So let's let's try to figure out x here. So let's set up a proportion. x is to the square root of 2. So x is to the square root of 2. Like 5 radical 2 is to 1. 5 radical 2 is to 1. And I'm going to cross multiply. So 1 times x is x. And then when I multiply here, remember, you can only multiply numbers inside of radicals with other numbers inside of radicals. So the 5 doesn't have anybody to get multiplied by. And then the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is just the square root of 4. But this can be simplified because this is really just 5 times 2, which is 10. So I think I found out that x equals 10. So one of them I found really easy. Uh, the other one I had to do a little bit of work for, but it came out to be a nice number, and it's 10. All right, let's try number four. So again, I'm going to set up my, my template down here, my own 45 going 1, 1, radical 2. And let's set up some proportions. Um, again, one of the legs I have, so the other leg has to match. So that one doesn't require any work. Uh, M is now going to be a little bit tougher. So let's get after M and see what we can do. And I'm going to do similar triangles. So M is to radical 2. M is to radical 2 as 3 root 3 is to 1. So basically we did big over little, big over little. Cross multiply. 1m is just m. When I multiply these two again, the 3 just comes down because there's no number on the outside here to multiply with. But then I have the square root of 2 times the square root of 3, which is the square root of 6. And I don't believe I can break 6 down using any perfect squares because the perfect squares were 4, 9, um, you know, they're already too big, but 16, 25. None of those numbers go into 6. So radical 6 is simplified. So this is my answer. 3 times the square root of 6. So this is kind of a weird triangle where all three sides have radicals in them. Now I could change them to decimals and they would look a little bit more normal, but I want to leave radicals in and get used to dealing with radicals. All right. Moving on down. Number 5 and 6. You may be able to use a shortcut on number 5, and you may know the answer right away and be like, hey, Kraft, why are you doing all this extra work? But if you see that shortcut, go ahead and use it right now. But if not, follow with me. Um, the ratio is 1, 1, radical 2. So we are going to do big over little. 7 radical 2 is to radical 2 as x is to 1, we cross multiply, so that is the square root of 2 times x equals 1 times anything, it's just whatever it is, and just like always, if I want to get x by itself, I divide both sides by the square root of 2, and this is just going to give me 7. Because the square root of 2 times divided by the square root of 2 is just 1. So x is 7. Now a lot of you probably early on said, well, heck, you could work the pattern backwards from the beginning of the lesson. And whatever these sides are, the hypotenuse is always going to be that number times the square root of 2. 
Um, this next one, this one's going to be a little tougher. I want to star this because this is where I'm going to show you um, how you simplify radicals when you end up with one on the bottom. So let's, let's set up a similar triangle here. We are going to set up our template triangle which is 1, 1, radical 2. And now we say 4 is to radical 2 as, and then it doesn't matter which one I do, I'm going to use A and 1, as A is to 1. So we multiply here, and I cross multiply, and I get the square root of 2 times A equals 4. And just like I did in the last one, I'm going to divide both sides by the square root of 2. And I end up with A equals 4 over the square root of 2. Now, on yesterday's lesson, this happened on a couple problems. And I let you just leave it that way. Okay? But this is not considered simplified. Okay? To be simplified, to be simplified, you can have no square roots in the denominator. So technically you're not supposed to have a square root in the bottom of a fraction. So in order to fix this we do what's called we fix by rationalizing the denominator. So I'm going to show you right now what's called rationalizing the denominator. So, I have my problem. I'm stuck here at 4 over radical 2, and they're telling me, hey, you can't have a radical 2 on the bottom. So I can fix this. Whatever number that is on the bottom, simply multiply by that over itself. Because really, this is just 1. Multiplying by 1 does not hurt anything. So since I'm multiplying by 1 here, um, when you multiply fractions, you just go straight across. So on the top, I have 4 times radical 2. And on the bottom, I have the square root of 2 times the square root of 2, which is the square root of 4, which can be simplified into a whole number. So I have 4 radical 2 all over 2. So now, magically, boom, my radical's gone. It's not on the bottom. Anytime you take a radical and multiply it by itself, that's going to happen. You're going to end up with a perfect square. And now I can simplify one last step. 4 divided by 2 is just 2 radical 2. So there's my final answer. Now, in general, in general, I, I probably could have avoided this, this step right here. Whenever you have the square root of something times the square root of something, that just comes out to be x. All right. If you notice here, the square root of 2 times the square root of 2, it just turned out to be 2. I could have avoided this intermediate step right here, but I wanted to show it. All right. We'll get more practice. I don't expect you to become an expert on that. But this little part about rationalizing the denominator is, uh, is going to be important later on in your math career. All right. Let's go down and do a couple word problems here. Number 7. Find the area of a square with a diagonal of 10 feet. So let's first draw this thing. So I have a square. And the diagonal is 10. And we need to find the area of the square. That's my ultimate goal. Ultimate goal is find the area of a square. Well, I know how to find the area of a square. It's just base times height or side times itself. You know, it's the side times the side. Well, problem is, I don't know what the side length is. I know they're both x, but I don't know the actual number. Now, the cool thing about a square, and this always works with a square, it does not work with rectangles, is when you do a diagonal of a square, it splits the 90 degree angles into a couple of 45. So look what we have. We have a special right triangle. All right, so I can kind of ignore, if I want to, I can kind of right now ignore this piece for a moment and just solve that right triangle. Okay, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to set up my little, my little template triangle, 1, 1, radical 2. And let's try to figure out what x is. So 10 is to radical 2, 
like x is to 1. And we cross multiply here. I get 10 equals x times the square root of 2. And then I divide both sides by the square root of 2. Divide by the square root of 2. Divide by the square root of 2. And I just get x equals 10 over radical 2. Now, we just learned that that's not allowed. I'm not allowed to do that. So I need to rationalize the denominator. So I'm going to multiply by that bottom radical over itself. And the square root of 2 times square root of 2 is the square root of 4, which is just 2. And on top, you end up with 10 radical 2. And then finally, 10 divided by 2 is 5 radical 2. So going back to my original problem, I can now kind of think about it as a square again. Back to my original problem, I now know what x is. All right, x is actually 5 times the square root of 2. So now I should be able to use the area formula to finish the problem. The area is the base multiplied by the height or the side times itself. Well, now I got to use some rules for for rash or not for rationalizing for multiplying radicals, outside number times outside number, and inside number times inside number, which, if you know what it is, you could just write that answer. But square root of two times square root of two is the square root of four, which is really just two. So my final answer is fifty. So the area of a square with a diagonal of 10 feet is 50 square feet. Or if you prefer, you can write it feet squared. All right, that was a rough one. That was a bit of a battle. I had to find the sides and rationalize, and there was a lot to that one. So that, that be, be prepared to do something like that. On uh, homework quizzes, on the test, that's kind of a classic problem. All right, I'm going to use a trick a little bit on number 8. Uh, a few baseball players out there, major leagues, or even high school for that matter, bases are 90 feet apart, all right? And a baseball field is, is basically a, it's a diamond, but it's kind of like a square. You know, all of your bases here are, well, that's pretty crappy. Let me come in here and try to fix this a little bit. All right, and if you've ever played baseball, you got home plate, first base, second base, third base, and it's a square, so all of these are 90 degrees, and all the sides are the same length, and it says the bases are 90 feet apart, so it's 90 by 90 by 90 by 90 feet all the way around, and the question says, how far is it from home to second base? So the catcher's going to try to throw a guy out stealing second. I want to know how far is it from home to second. So basically, I'm saying find the diagonal. All right. Well, look at what we have here. We have a little special right triangle. We have the 45, 45, 90. And if this is 90 and this is 90, the diagonal there or the hypotenuse is just going to be 90 times the square root of 2. All right. That was the pattern. You remember the, the pattern for all of these all of these right triangles was 1, 1, square root of 2. So this one is 90, 90, 90, square root of 2. There's kind of, you can almost think of an understood 1 in front of that. Now, if you really wanted to figure out how many feet is that, then we would have to actually crank this one out and get a decimal. So let's just do that so it's a little more meaningful. 90 times the square root of 2 is about 127.28 feet. So that's how far a catcher has to throw the ball from exactly the home plate to the back of second base. About 127 feet. All right, now we're really going to kick it up a notch. Now we're going to put everything together and we're going to solve a problem that involves all of this stuff. So let's just kind of focus on this dude right over here. Ultimate goal is to find x. Uh, we have some clues along the way. 
So let's see what we can come up with. And I may use a shortcut or two here. So we have a 45, 45, 90, which means this side is 8, this side is 8, and the hypotenuse should be 8 square root of 2 because that follows the pattern that we've been working on today. Now I can focus on this big 30, 60, 90 up here that's looking something like this. All right. And I need this side. I know this is the 60 and I know this is the 30 and it looks like I have the baby. The smallest side is 8 radical 2. So I now need to find x. So now I'm going to use yesterday's lesson to set up a template triangle. 60, 30. And remember yesterday's template, the small side's 1, the hypotenuse is 2, and the freak side or the middle side is radical 3. So now we should be able to solve some uh, solve some similar triangles. So x is to radical 3. So x is to radical 3 as 8 radical 2 is to 1. Now this one's pretty nice because 1 times x is just x. So I'm about to get my answer here. And when I multiply these two, Remember, outside times outside, well, there's nothing there. I can kind of pretend it's a 1, but that would be 8. And then square root of 3 times square root of 2 is the square root of 6. So there is the answer to number 9, which is a multi-step problem. So we had to know something about the special right triangle from today, special right triangle from yesterday. Expect some more problems like that that kind of combine or put those two triangles together. All right, I think you have enough uh, in your arsenal now to attack 8.2 practice tomorrow and uh, come in prepared with these notes done and ready to rock and roll. See you.